legitimately refused for very good reasons. Therefore, the local countries have no negotiating power and they're well aware of that. And again, it's really important to note we are the only country in Europe that has a planning inspectorate at the top micromanaging local planning policy and overturning decisions at that rate, which is, you know, and it's also a very old model because every decision the planning inspectorate makes sets a precedent, which means that then so we're, we're seeing something that constantly drives down standards of development. Yeah. And there's nothing on the other side. There's no way for third parties and residents to challenge. They can't submit anything to the planning inspector. The cost of development, nothing. But for um, if a resident feels planning policy hasn't been followed, they have to find hundreds of thousands of pounds for legal costs. Yeah, it's a review. And yeah. I mean, what we did have it's here, bad system. what we did have here was that some people were finally putting their planning application, in fact, in February. And so we got our results back and we got all of all of our press coverage while the pe official period of the consultation with the public was going on. So, in fact, 225 submissions listed so far. We know, we know there have been more that haven't made the list yet, um, made by the public and by local groups, including all of the Bethany Green's entire surveys, collated results from the <coughs> time there. 77% um, were against the plans, many of those, including a lot by people we never heard of who've clearly seen these things in the local press, uh, are citing the pollution as the, the, the reason, the, the concrete, grabable reason to stop this is going to be harmful for everyone's health. And the result of this so far, now we, can't, we can't say what's going to happen, but originally a planning decision was due in July. Lewisham have actually expanded their consultation period and they say they're not going to make a decision on this development now until September because of the concerns about the traffic and about the pollution because they need more time to look at this. It has been, very, it has been flagged up so much by all of this, by what we, we were able to do with the Citizen Science Project and the press coverage feeding into the consultation, the council is having to take a serious look at this now. Yeah. And that has been resolved result we've got out of it. Could you just ask one question about planning? Is, is this something that gets referred to the mayor as well? If, 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 if Lewisham is to pass this business? Is the mayor the right that, well, the mayor to worry about it. I, I'm not cer exactly certain. It's a bit fluid. There's been a couple of development solutions that were in designated development areas, and in those, in fact, Lucian Council did tell developers we need more affordable housing here, and the developer probably went over their head to Boris Johnson. Yeah, said yeah, yeah. Convoy, yeah. 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 they've been stopped by exactly that. So but, yeah. Yeah. yeah, because I just think because it just seems this, this again the mad of it is two miles up the road. You've got the IKEA plan in Greenwich. See, this is almost like, this is like, you know, if you're between Ikea and this Sainsbury's, you're basically, you're bookended by this mad plan, right? yeah. And it's almost like you need a, a more strategic overview, but this Lewis should deciding one thing, Greenwich deciding one thing, and not really talking to each other. I mean, the ridiculous thing is that supermarkets are actually, you know, they're really struggling at the moment. We're now doing our supermarket shopping online. You know, we're not going to need these big things anymore. Yeah. And the developers know this, but what they're interested in is the housing they're buying. Yeah. They know that if the supermarket goes bust, it's fine, they'll put some more, something or other in Dark there. Storage. You know, it's, yeah, or office space or something like that on the ground floor. But um, it would be almost impossible to then turn it back into small units. So, you know, they're, they're just motivated by, you know, what would allow them. And they know that if there isn't that ground floor complete coverage, then it's hard for them to then justify that high density without leaving a public space in the ground. They don't want to waste space on green um, or, or trees. Um, so, yes, it's a... Quite a, quite a cynical, you know, push, let's push you know, the maximum development on this side as we possibly can. Um, and uh, yeah, as you say, with the different layers above, of the mayor's calling powers and the planning inspector, there's uh, in some ways there's very little that the council can do, but the council must try to do what they can. Well, we have had, you know, we have had an impact, I think, certainly on the, um, on the strength of will of some of the councillors in trying to resist this. So what next? Um, we've already been, the group has been contacted by someone in Catford. Um, we don't know if there's a group there yet. If there isn't, we're going to be advising, advising them, as we said, identify the groups, get, get noticed. Yeah, we've um, had quite a lot of neighbours come forward who have had, you know, some have lost, you know, sons or daughters or had, the, had their health impacted, you know, because of as, um, asthma impacts of air pollution and further along the road. So we've got a lot of people who are, you know, really. Um, have become campaigners as a result of, of, of tragedy within their own <coughs> <coughs> and, 
So we're trying to extend the network really to get a, a sense of a greater number of people in Lewisham who are going to become aware of and, 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 and profile what's happening with pollution. Especially, especially because Lewisham Council's own air pollution study is not, not really put to standard. We've been trying to get the tree planting, street tree planting budget reinstated as well, um, in terms of, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. well, we've got one councillor, a green councillor on the council, it's quite hard, it's one against 53, but uh, <laughs> things like that. We're trying to do a bounty air pollution generally, um, at Paul's Sound, to try to put more sustainable transport solutions. And the Better League Green is continuing to keep an eye on what is happening, mm -hmm. uh, continuing to keep an eye on the, co on the consultation and to make people aware of what is of what has been going on and continue to get su submissions into consultation for decision in September to make sure that the council and the planning officers are, are aware there is a strong feeling in local residents of really deep concern about this and they they are playing with our health and frank and frankly we prefer the gate to stay run down than for our health to be further impacted by, by the amount of in air pollution, the development as it stands to that course. Yeah. I mean, the, the other thing that so maybe we didn't make clear, clear enough is that, that to, this type of supermarket store really does increase the amount of people who use cars, you know, because you don't have a local town centre with a diversity of shops, it's a pleasant place to go in the evening or a pleasant place to find a range of different um, uh, things to buy and just to hang around in, then um, you will drive out of the area. You know, this just will this will turn um, originally a slightly run down town centre, but will turn an important district town centre into a stop off point for people who are just um, hopping into the supermarket, uh, which is such a tragedy. So, of course, this campaign to make sure that there's a radical change towards the modern proposing on this site is carrying on, objections are still going in, and uh, fingers crossed, um, we will win. Thank you very much.